Hi everyone, my name is Peyton and in this video I want to expand upon some of the blueprint basics that we went over in the previous video. Uh, what I want to show here actually is the ability to control the lights. Uh, so as you see here when I press F, uh, all the lights change um, both with the emissives as well as the fog and everything else. Um, and I basically just want to show how you can add that uh, to your scene for something simple like turning on and off the lights. So I'm going to start here by actually replacing all of these lights with one that doesn't actually have uh, those controls. So there we go. And right click, replace. And there we go. So now I'm going to actually open up this, uh, which is our blueprint that I have in scene here. Um, and as you see right now, similar to what we were going over previously. I just have my spotlight, my street light, and uh, the one thing about my street light is that it has three different material IDs. Um, so you can see the locations. Uh, element zero is my metal, so it's like my pole and everything. Element one is my uh, actual emissive material that I have just here that kind of makes it look like uh, the light is on and it's glowing. And then the element two is a fog so it's basically giving this soft little halo on a cone uh, that i modeled um, it's just a cheap way to make fog but then i have of course my spotlight here as well that kind of is um, offering some additional lighting down here to the actual other models and also giving our shadows and all um, so what i'm going to do is actually go into the event graph and i'm going to start with a event tick um, because i want this to uh, yeah, basically I'm going to drag this out and I want it to um, continuously check uh, for whether or not the key has been pressed or not. Um, so I'm just going to actually drag out of here and type git player controller uh, and I'm going to say from input device. So there we go. And then what I want to do now is actually check to see if the input key has been pressed or not. So I'm just going to type in, um, as I drag this out, I type in was input key just pressed. So there we go. And you can see that there's a couple of other options as well. Um, but I just want to get that key uh, press that is coming from my keyboard. That way I know whether or not. Um, and then at that state, I can then, of course, actually tell it to change the values of uh, the light and all. Um, but with this now we have set up, I want to go ahead and you can either click here and type it all in, or you can just click this button and then press whatever key you want on your keyboard. And it's really nice. Um, so I just pressed F. Um, so whenever I press the F key, uh, this should uh, end up with the result. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm checking for whether or not the input key was pressed. And if so, I want it to, you know, um, have an, an if statement. So I'm going to pull out of here and do a branch. So this branch is basically going to be a true false statement, as you see. So if true, it goes that way. If false, it goes this way. Um, and my condition is going to be the actual key being pressed. Uh, so that's what I'm plugging in there. And now we have this so far. So if I were to play, let's go real quick. Um, we should be able to see, so I'm just going to hit play from here. And now you can see that the event tick is um, going basically for every tick and we have it running through um, hitting the get player controller so right now so far it is working just wanted to make sure we have that set up um, and now I'm going to stop the the play for now and um, now go over to our next portion so with a branch if it is true so if my uh, input key was pressed F what I want it to do is first off toggle the visibility of our light. So that's going to be the easiest one, which is our spotlight, just because it's separate than everything else. Um, the other values that we're going to be changing are actually like material changes and all. So it might be a little bit more difficult or at least take more work. Um, so I'm just going to go here and do a toggle visibility. So there we 
go, we see the uh, previews have a couple of them. I'm going to do it for the spotlight. And so it's just going to pull out the spotlight um, as the target. Uh, just in case that doesn't come out, you can also drag out the spotlight and also uh, reference it as the target. Uh, but now we have that and it should, of course, let's go here and now try that again. So if I press F, it should toggle the visibility of the spotlight itself. So you can see that our lights are changing and now we have our first step. So I'm gonna go back in here and what I wanna do now is set up a, uh, basically a instance where it goes to one material uh, one time, but then when, of course, uh, we press it again, we want it to go back to the other material. Uh, the reason being is because when I press this button and uh, press the F button and actually turn off my lights, I want uh, this material change and this material, the fog material to change uh, or go away. And then when I press it again, I want the light to come back on. And then of course these to come back. Um, so what I'm going to do for that loop is I'm going to uh, create a multi gate. So this is basically just going to be a gate that controls um, which direction it's going out of. And so it goes down, it starts at the zero and then it goes to the uh, one for the second time. You can add additional pins. Um, but what's nice about this is I can hit loop. So basically once it's done with these uh, exit gates that it has on the multi-gate, uh, then it'll go back to the top. So if I only have two, it'll toggle between the zero and the one uh, for every other. So it should match up with our light as well. So now we have that, I'm gonna hit compile. And then what I wanna do next is actually pull out of the out for the zero. I'm gonna just do a set material and I want it to uh, cast to the street light. So there we go. And now we have our street light there. I can pull this down right here. So, um, and I'm just giving it a little bit of space because we're gonna make a couple of these. So then what I want is of course, yeah, target is my street light. And then I also want it to um, change again. And so I can just control C, control V and copy this over and then put this into the out for one and then targets also for the street light. Um, and so this is basically going to toggle between uh, those two. Uh, now what it means or what it means by element index. So that is the element of your actual material. So if I go into the street light here, you can see that I have element zero, element one, element two. So that's basically the location of your materials itself. So I don't want to change element zero because that is my metal. So what I'm going to start with first is my, uh, my emissive here and I have it called light on material. So if you notice down bottom, I have a light off material and light on material. The only difference really is I just uh, don't have the emissive on this one. Um, and then with my fog, I have a fog and a fog no. And so the no basically just has a zero opacity to it. Um, and so this just makes it really quick to be able to change between the two. Um, but what I'm going to do is switch this one first to element index one and then also element index one. So both of these are going to be for the emissive that we're trying to target. And in the material for this one, so the first time that I hit the button, I want the light to go off. So what that means is I should find my light off material. So you can uh, search it however, but I'm just going to click and actually type it in. Uh, off material and then when I press the button again uh, or the key on the keyboard I want it to of course bring that material back so I'm gonna go down here and do light dash on and there we go and so now we have our two different materials there and should be if I just play from here if I press F, you can see that now the emissive's actually changing as well um, as I press the button, and then my light's also changing. And all I have to do now is, of course, uh, change it for that final uh, value as well. So I can just Control C, Control V, uh, both of these, 
And one thing to keep in mind, plug these in, of course. We also need my target uh, to be the, still the street light. And the only difference, of course, is we're now doing the element index of two, which is where my fog is. If we go back over here, just making sure. And I want to change this to fog no. And then this one's going to be fog there. So I can hit compile. And just with this, we have set up our light and everything to be toggleable by a keyboard key. So now as I press or um, press play, I can walk around and I can control all the lights in the scene. Um, and this is great because it's actually on the actor uh, blueprint as well. So what we can do is, you know, you can place them all throughout the scene and whenever I hit press or uh, play, um, it's going to instantly work with all those blueprints. Um, so it's a really nice way to make like blueprints um, using the actor blueprints uh, to where you can control things if you actually have it in the individual actors um, and you can control things throughout your entire environment um, in a way like that. So uh, yeah, of course this can get a lot more expanded upon and get into a lot of ways with like uh, setting up switches um, and all of that, but I just wanted to show uh, kind of an example of how you could turn on and off materials uh, as well as kind of changing some of the values and of course also toggling visibility. So uh, yeah, that's about it for this video. If you have any questions, of course, feel free to drop them below. Uh, but yeah, I will see you in the next one.